how it builds on itself, right? So what we learned in chapter one helps us understand chapter two, which helps us understand chapter three, which helps us understand chapter four, and so on and so on. And so now that we're in chapter five, it's really starting to kind of begin to culminate and these ideas that we've learned before are helping us to better understand what we're learning now. And remember that the main purpose of the book of Romans is to reinforce the gospel and the importance of living a life in relationship with Jesus. In the first few chapters of Romans, they really built the foundational truths about our sinful nature. Um, chapter 1 and 2 talks about how God has wrath and that is still real today. And then we all learn about how Jesus died to satisfy that wrath and cover those sins apart from anything we do of our own and how we ourselves could never earn it. And now in chapter 5, we're going to be digging into this imagery some more and talking a little more about sin. Now raise your hand if you have heard the story of Adam and Eve. All right, most of you. Who can tell me the story of Adam and Eve in 20 seconds? 20 seconds. I need someone else to challenge. Maddie, I feel you. Are you raising your hand? You're not? Are you? Maybe? Death 
Grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I told you it was a bit of a chunk, but it's really good. So, in this passage, Paul is talking about how when Adam sinned, that led all of humanity into a life of sinful nature and sin. So, by when that happened, everybody else fell in. All the other sin came with But, in that way, Jesus, who died for all of us, in an even greater way, covered all of our sin. When Adam sinned, it wrecked us. And when Jesus died for us, it saved us. So, what I'm going to do is I want to come and get those pots from you lovely ladies. Hold on, let me get my glove back. And I want to see what you drew as the image of Jesus. So, <laughs> Can I please have that? the 
this perfect, beautiful image bearer covered in the blood of Jesus. And that's it. Scripture tells us that Jesus separates us so far from our sin, it's as far as the east is from the west. Take a minute and think about that. The east from the west. That is difficult to wrap your head around. Because they're not these locations, they are directions. They are the complete opposite of each other. If you're going east, you cannot be going west. They don't coexist together. They are completely separate. To be east is to not be west. And so to be as far from our sin as the east is from the west, it, we don't even exist on the same plane as it when we are covered with the blood of Jesus. We accept that forgiveness. And although in this life, even after we accept Jesus, we will probably continue to sin because we are still broken people and we are imperfect. But as we strive towards Jesus, yes, we do feel the painful after effects of sin in life, the our sin individually, the sin of humanity overall, we live in the reality of a fallen, broken world. But we can put our hope in the one who has made us whole. We can put our hope in Jesus because he gave his life in our place so that we could be made new and have a relationship with him. So when the day comes that we stand before God, we can say that truth, is that our sin, starting with Adam, made us broken. But Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, died in my place, and he has made me whole again. And so I encourage you today to just take some time to reflect on that. And especially if you're someone who really struggles to believe that truth. So actually, we're going to take the next 20 seconds, and we're just going to sit in silence. And I want you to really examine your mind and examine your heart and say, okay, so I am broken by my sin, and Jesus can make me whole again no matter what I do or how far away I go. He can make me new. Do I believe that? Do I genuinely believe that? Or do I struggle to believe that God will forgive me of that sin if I do it one more time? Do I genuinely believe that God can forgive the other people around me who sin and hurt me? I want you to take 20 seconds, and I want you to really pray and examine yourself and figure out if you believe it, and if not, where are your sins? Okay, so just 20 seconds of silence with you got, okay? Hopefully, we're able to at least begin to answer that question and see if that's a truth that you believe. And what I want you to do when you're in smaller times today, I want you to take some time to try and address that. You don't have to share if you're not comfortable. You can share with your group where you stand. And if you're struggling to believe that, talk to your group. If you're not comfortable talking to your group, Talk to a leader afterwards or talk to your parent or somebody else who you trust that knows Jesus and loves Jesus to help work through that. Because if you find yourself not believing this for yourself, that's important. You don't believe it because I said it. You don't believe it because your parents told you to. You believe it for yourself. It will lead to issues later on in life if you don't believe this for yourself. And so my takeaway for you today is really to take the time that you need to to wrestle with this idea and see if you believe it, and if not, start to ask the questions that make you doubt it. Say them out loud. Say them to somebody else. Create a conversation. Create a dialogue. Because it is your relationship with Jesus. And it can be the best thing ever. But you've got to make it your own. Alright? So I'm going to pray, and then you're going to go into small group times and dig into this idea first. Alright? Let's pray. 
Dear Lord, I thank you so much for these students. I thank you so much for the legacy of faith that many of them have been brought up in. And God, I, I lift them all up no matter what their background is, no matter what their relationship with you is at present. God, I pray that they would come to know you and to trust you and to believe in you for themselves. That their relationship with you would be personal because you are a personal God and you desire so much that one-on-one -on -one relationship with every single one of them. God, I pray they would know that's true. And I pray they would live in that reality. And God, I pray if there's anybody in this room right now who is questioning if you are even real at all, if this whole Jesus thing is just hogwash or not, God, I pray that you would give them the strength and the courage to speak that doubt aloud and start to explore their questions with someone. God, you are so good. I love you so much. And above all things, so, so thankful for Jesus and that his death has led to us to have this ability to be made new and made whole again in you. Not just when we get to heaven and before you, but that we get to live in the reality of our salvation now here on earth. God, you are so good. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, small group leaders, if you want to come up, I will give you your question handouts. Um, you guys can like turn your chairs.